My name is Adrian Rami. I'm in the products organization at C3. I'm responsible for a portfolio of AI applications, supply chain reliability, sustainability, financial services, defense and intelligence, uh, and others. Uh, so it's great to have you here. Uh, I'm excited. It's warm. It's humid. We don't get that in California. Um, so it's great to be here. So uh, I'll let Alex uh, introduce himself. Afternoon, everybody. My name is Alex Amato. Uh, I'm on Adrian's team. I specifically focus on our suite of supply chain applications, um, inventory optimization, and, and, and a few others we'll be talking about today. And so what we wanted to do was give a little context. You know, Tom, Human, Nikhil, Lila, and Mark gave a lot of context for the product that we've been developing over the last 12, 13 years. The new version that we've been really focused on for the last three and what will be coming out shortly. But also to contextualize in terms of how is this going to improve businesses uh, functionally across a few of the different areas of your individual investments. So instead of talking about the abstracts of data lakes and data architectures, we wanted to get a little bit deeper onto a few of the ways in which we can take advantage of your existing investments, ERP being one of the most comprehensive, uh, as Jim uh, Snabe mentioned, that you've probably deployed in a number of different instances, but how do you then take advantage of that? And then how we've turned that into a family of applications and capabilities that provide uh, insights, provide business value. At the end of the day, that's really what's gonna drive all of your investment, that's gonna drive the digital transformation of your businesses. And so I wanna tell a little bit of a story about C3 sitting on top and leveraging your existing ERP systems. Uh, and then we'll dive into how that really manifests and we'll take a really hard focus on the supply chain area since that's one of the most comprehensive ways in which you operate today. So C3 plus ERP, think of that as uh, the framework by which we're taking advantage of everything you've already invested and you're aware your investments will be going. What is it already? Well, it's managing your accounts, your orders, your materials, CPQ, your supplier management, your customers. It ranges from a variety of different systems, many of which you probably have, if not all of these, deployed somewhere across your global architecture. And it's performing extremely useful functions, transactional functions, operational functions, supplier management, logistics and distributions, order fulfillment. But it might also have some challenges, right? Some of those challenges include the ability to analyze data across time. One of those challenges would be the ingestion and modeling of, of this certain data uh, over a series of um, uh, instances of those ERP installations. It results in insufficient scenario planning, reactive analysis. I mean, most of us who work in the supply chain area are really reactive and responding rather than being proactive and, and, and uh, engaging and predicting. It's also you know, limited to what it sees. You're not getting the benefits of what happens externally. You're not getting the weather and the news and the social media that contextualizes all of the information and behavior. Disconnected across the enterprise. One BU and another BU operate perhaps a lot of the same content capabilities, but they're not able to take advantage of their business processes together. And so the way in which we think about it is it's an and. It's an and, it's your ERP plus everything external. The CRMs, the MRPs that are not connected. The operational systems, the SCADA systems, the DCS systems. It's natural language processing on all sorts of external sources of information, whether it be commodities or indices, whether it be news information, social media, macroeconomic data, econometrics and trends, geopolitical information, right? I mean, it's a pretty easy test to say right now that anything with Ukraine and Russia is gonna be pretty important uh, and impacted for your global supply chain, but you know, how can we also use that and understand that at a different scale? And so the context is, let's ensure that we provide a unified view of all of the core concepts, entities, and data um, for all of these together, and then look at that across time. Because it's a really important to know what happened yesterday. It's just as important to know what happened a week ago, and at one month ago, and one year ago. And you want the entire snapshot of all data to look like what was the state of the world in that time. That's where AI can then look at the signals and the patterns and take advantage of those insights. 
And so the way in which we think about it is if you've got your existing investments across the board, your ERP being one of many of the core operational and transactional systems that you operate across your global business, your CRMs, your market information, and any external news or sources of information, all of that powers your business your sales functions, your operational functions, your production functions, your finance functions, your HR functions, your supply chain functions. And you're leveraging a lot of those core uh, entrenched, embedded, highly useful technologies and capabilities. C3 and your ERP capabilities sit on top. We are the unification of the data to support analytics. It's not necessarily moving the data. It can, the data can reside exactly where they are, but it's the modeling of all of that to then support artificial intelligence. And then it's a family of extremely useful and targeted AI insights that drive specific business value in supply chain, but also in manufacturing operations. You heard earlier about our reliability applications and process optimization. It's a taking advantage of all of those. In sustainability, it's about scope one, scope two, scope three emissions, as you heard from Dan Jevons. And it's on the CRM side, AI-based CRM, which you'll also hear more about. And it's those complementary capabilities that drive business value, that drive better decision making, augmented intelligence in a sense, um, in order to take advantage of the investments but don't have to wait for anything to change. You don't have to wait for investments in data lake architectures. You don't have to wait for a changeover from one ERP to another or from legacy to even get to full MRP control of your systems to get value. And it'll support the journey as you do. Right? Maybe you do want to be making investments, but you want to get value today and you want to get value tomorrow and you don't want to wait. And that's really the core concept that we're bringing to bear. And so I'll hand it over to Alex to start talking about our supply chain suite. What is it enabling, supporting? And we'll tag team a little bit at the specific production applications that we offer. Great, thanks. So as Adrian said, um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how this, this ERP plus C3 story manifests itself in supply chain, tell you a little bit about our C3 AI suite of supply chain applications um, as they stand today, um, take you through one, and then, and then Adrian uh, and I will kind of walk you through um, these, these supply chain applications that we've spent the last five plus years developing and how um, they solve very specific and targeted business problems, but together, really um, uh, demonstrate the power of this, this ERP plus C3 story. So um, a little bit of background, you know, I, I spend all my hours at C3 all day, every day thinking about supply chain. And you heard a lot this morning about um, the, the core value prop of C3, which is enterprise AI, right? And so when we think about supply chain, um, we entered the space very unsurprisingly very focused on finding the highest value use cases um, where AI, machine learning, and optimization on very large data sets can be applied to drive value in ways that you know, other systems today simply, simply can't do, right? And so in, in conversations across industries in the, in the supply chain space, right, there are a few key areas that um, over and over again present themselves. Right, as, as core opportunities. One is this optimization problem, right? Your supply chain is, is an optimization problem. And uh, being able to apply uh, new optimization techniques, leveraging the cloud, leveraging the power of our underlying platform on these um, common classes of, of optimization, whether they be production scheduling or distribution in nature, right? These are, these are um, uh, uh, highly, highly addressable with, with AI and, and optimization being, being brought together. Number two, um, in, in bringing these data together in new ways, um, ways that allow you to, to more quickly identify, diagnose, and respond, you can move the day-to-day the, uh, -day of a planner um, away from firefighting and more towards proactive monitoring and mitigation, right? And three, if we're able to um, model and, and monitor over time changing conditions, changing conditions in, in, in a supply network and um, the, the macro environment around that network, you're able to more dynamically and, and in a more targeted way set, adjust, and readjust uh, parameters that make your, your, your network run. Right? And so these are really some of the core challenges 
um, that, that, that we saw and continue to see as opportunities and, and, and really are where a lot of our application uh, R&D has, uh, has been focused. Today, as, as you heard Nikhil talk a little bit about um, in an earlier session, our supply chain suite of applications is, uh, consists of five applications. Um, these are uh, sourcing optimization, right, which, which we'll talk a little bit more about. This is about, uh, as Nikhil said, really uh, enabling um, sourcing managers, buyers, and other personas to be uh, much more strategic, leveraging AI and machine learning to um, uh, address things like pricing optimization and supplier risk. Uh, and then when you, when, you, when you think about the supply planning workflows and the way they interconnect, really all four of the, of the next applications you see have a critical role to play, right? From, from demand planning, right? AI-based demand forecasting, um, feeding into production scheduling, feeding into uh, inventory management, balancing optimization, and supply network risk, right? Managing, uh, 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 mitigating, and responding to uh, risks um, and, and issues as they as they you know present themselves throughout your network. Um, so the other thing that's really important to us and um, uh, has been kind of the underpinning to our roadmap for these applications is the fact that in order for these to really be of value uh, and for them to interoperate with your ERP effectively, they need to be built on the same common foundation, and so. That is the approach we've taken from the beginning with, with, with these applications, right? Call it a digital twin, call it a data foundation. There was a healthy discussion of, uh, of the merits of digital twins this morning. Um, but, but regardless of what you call it, right, it's critical that you have this common underlying object model, right? And, and one of the things, um, again, going back to, you know, Adrian's conversations around um, ERP, right? Historically, ERPs are, have been very transactional in nature, right? And then along came, uh, you know, views and snapshots and histories as people realized it's more and more important to maintain not just what is, but what was. Uh, but even with those um, kind of bolt-on, right, capabilities over the years that, that ERPs have delivered, um, it's very, very hard to apply to fully leverage AI and machine learning or other, you know, um, uh, really use cases that require big data, the way that data are represented without applying heavy transformation on this data as it, as it resides in ERP. I'm sure many of you recognize this, right? And, and so the approach we've taken here with the supply chain digital twin is either to persist or, or, or transform and virtualize these data in a way that maintain history, particularly of those data elements that are most transactional in nature. So take, for example, orders, order lines, schedule lines, right? Applying any type of, of machine learning AI to a use case in this space requires you not just to know the order in its final form, but the order as it, as it was created and be able to play back and forward the life of this order or um, this, this lot, this inventory movement, right? Or, you know, these forecasts as they change over time. Right, it's critical that you're able to see what, what, what was and how it changed, whether that change was caused by uh, movement in your network or a decision made by a, a fulfillment manager or a demand planner. Right, and so, so the approach we've taken in modeling um, uh, these, these objects, and a lot of investment has gone into this, by the way, over the last six months, is with that in mind. So that you can leverage the data and your history built up in your ERP, but the way it's represented makes it much easier and faster to apply different types of AI and machine learning to different parts of, of, uh, of your supply chain data depending on the use case. And so these applications leverage different subsets of this, this domain model, right? And so, so many of our customers start with one particular supply chain application and, 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 and build on that, both in terms of data and, and, and functionality moving to, to, to adjacent use cases, right? Um, and, and, and or building their own applications on our, our supply chain object model. And so the way we think about our supply chain um, applications is really, um, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a not in spite of, but with your ERP system, providing dynamic, intelligent planning and response, right? Your ERP is still your transactional system, your operational system, but working with your ERP, you can get faster, more nimble, smarter, um, more proactive, um, leveraging you know, the, 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 
the, the embedded workflows in this app in these applications plus these these AI machine learning algorithms. We have customers using every which supply chain application platform tool set you can possibly imagine. And the way we work with customers, generally speaking, is not just putting specific tools in specific buckets, because as you can imagine, you know, customers say they have SAP. Well, are you using SAP or SAP ECC and SAP SCM and SCM IBP? Are you using IBP for you know, demand planning? Are you using it for inventory management? And so it's very much a conversation about what goes where. Our applications not only can integrate with your core ERP systems, but you know, additionally, other supply chain specific planning tools, execution tools. Um, and so part of the, the, the open platform concept that was talked about this morning applies very much to this picture as well. So it's not really a one, uh, you know, a, a simple answer, but there, there's a lot of different customers using these things in different ways. Three core capabilities that virtually every one of our supply chain applications are really built around, right? Once you have this data together in a you know, fit for AI purpose uh, uh, form, right? Optimization at scale is, is, is a core capability that you see in inventory optimization and production schedule optimization, right? And it's not just the, uh, the optimization algorithms themselves, it's how do you manage these optimization models, especially when you're talking about optimization models that are tuned on a per product or per product facility combination you know, scale. Uh, what if forecasting, what if, what if scenario simulation, right? Whether it's, it's what if scenario um, modeling for demand forecasting, what if scenario modeling for um, inventory prediction or inventory forecasting, right, another core piece, and then predictive modeling. Right, uh, uh, predicting uh, lead times, predicting uh, other types of, of, of risks, interruptions, right, all built on top of that, that foundation we talked about. The other thing um, that's really, really important uh, to us is extensibility, right? So when we think about starting with, with a particular supply chain use case and then building on top of it, either moving from uh, a C3 supply chain application to the next, or moving from uh, a C3 application to potentially a, an application developed by one of our customers or partners, right? The way that these things are designed provides full reusability of the foundational object model, of extensions to that object model as you make them, right? Um, of these optimization pipelines, uh, uh, pre-built connectors to commercial, sol you know, best-in-class commercial solvers, um, pre-built pipelines for best-in-class AI, NLP, you name it, libraries, right, that can be directly applied to, to the supply chain object models that, that, that come in our suite. Um, extensible workflows, right? Um, because SAP is never configured you know, the same way twice, our applications you know, by design need to be extremely flexible to support different kinds of planning, execution, fulfillment workflows, um, depending on the nuances of your business. Um, and then, interoperable experiences, right? As you bring more capability online in C3, it's, it's really, really important that your demand planner, your sourcing, uh, your strategic sourcing manager, your inventory planner, view this platform as a tool where they can collaborate, they can communicate in ways that are, are much more challenging in, in, in your traditional you know, uh, operational systems. And so that's another core element that you see here across all of the applications. Um, the other really important thing is that as you extend and build on top of these core capabilities, whether it's our, our core digital twin object model or our applications, any of these extensions that are, that are configured by customers, by partners, are customer partner IP, right? So bring your secret sauce, bring your proprietary uh, um, you know, risk algorithm, inventory optimization routine, that you've been working on for the last 10 years and scale it across your enterprise in one of these applications, right? And that's really key because, because some customers choose to leverage uh, you know, C3 AIs, proprietary optimization routines, algorithms, machine learning models. Others simply want to use the platform and these, these purpose-built applications and our object model to really take theirs to the next level. A good example of, of a pipeline uh, in, in, in one context might be an optimization pipeline. So let's take inventory optimization for example. An inventory optimization pipeline basically is, 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 some, is, a, uh, is an, a framework that allows you to optimize 
inventory levels, given a set of predefined data inputs that are mapped to C3's supply chain object model, right? Have a whole slew of configurations. Think about different set points, different constraints, right? Um, and, you know, a configurable cost function, if you will. If you think about optimization, right, you have this cost function. Different um, uh, types of inventory optimization have different constraints, different, diff different elements or terms in your cost function, right? And then a framework that persists a history of outputs, right? And so when you think about pipeline, it's model version history, it's a configurable input spec, it's a configurable set of constraints and terms, and then it's, it's, it's your output. So if you're, if you're ingesting or virtualizing data represented in our object model, you can, you can look to basically apply this, this pipeline directly to that data because you've, you've mapped it correctly to, to this object model. So I'll talk a little bit about inventory optimization just for a second, then I'll pass it back off to Adrian to take, take us through some of the other applications. So inventory optimization, um, our, our oldest and most mature application in our suite of supply chain apps. Um, this is something that, uh, uh, though has been around a while, we have invested a lot in terms of user experience um, heading into uh, and, and, and approaching version eight that we heard a lot about this morning. Uh, and there are a few key areas I wanna call out. First, um, when we think about this, this inventory optimization problem, a big piece of the problem is um, is MRP, right? And is, is, is maintaining um, these, what, what, what you may call reorder parameters or buffers in, in, in a way that minimizes your inventory holding costs, right? But still allows you to maintain target service levels, OTIF targets, fill rate targets, what have you. And I think one of the things we've seen um, uh, to be most effective in bringing AI optimization and the planner together here is, you know, historically this, this uh, parameter tuning cycle was once every six months, once a quarter. And what, what we aim to do here is increasingly help planners get more targeted and more specific so that over time you can gradually bring that cycle down, right? Because ultimately the, the optimization problem changes every day every week, every month, right? And, and, and your supply network isn't necessarily as, as dynamic as a computer system where you can be turning knobs you know, in real time, but the closer you can get to that, the more opportunity there is to increase your, 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 your fill rates, your on-time and full percentage, and reduce, you know, on average, bring that inventory lower, right? The other thing uh, you know, that goes hand in hand with that is increasing planner productivity, right? So if, if, if I can, again, point the planner right to um, items, you know, inventory levels at specific locations that need to be looked at versus, you know, a scheduled kind of cyc cyclic uh, review process. I'm able to, you know, do a lot more with a lot less and free up more planner time for, you know, even higher value activities looking at, you know, inventory allocation and, and, and other more strategic things that, frankly, due to the firefighting and, and, and responsiveness required to, Stock out issues and other things are, are often challenging. So let's look at uh, one particular um, example here for an inventory optimization use case, where again, the name of the game is balancing. Again, it's all about optimization, your inventory levels, your inventory holding costs, and your service levels, right? Um, in this particular case, uh, C3 AI inventory optimization was uh, basically applied to uh, nine million rows of data. This is based, th think about this in terms of uh, number of, you know, uh, item facility or item location, material location pairs. Um, and, in, and in 12 weeks, right, um, identified a 100 million to 200 million inventory reduction opportunity, again, while maintaining target service levels, right, that, that in, in the case of this application are set as granular as you know, that, that item location uh, uh, combination level, right? So respecting your, your, your target service levels may be associated to your, your service classes, um, right? This application identifies specific locations, specific items for inventory reduction. Another similar use case, right? Um, uh, uh, similar inventory reduction opportunity. Um, in this case, um, training 80,000 optimization models, right? Each modeling their own distributions of uh, uncertainty and supply in demand, 
um, across 20 facilities, um, uh, identifying 15% inventory reduction opportunity, again, maintaining that, that, that those, um, those target service levels. Okay, let me pass off to, uh, to Adrian to take us through supply network risk and a few other applications. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. And I'll go quick. I think we want to spend a little bit of time on one application. I'll take you through the rest of the applications in the product suite. Supply network risk is probably one of the most topical, mainly because it's most geared towards on-time and full performance and inbound stockout prediction. Now, that's one of the most common problems we're seeing exacerbated by COVID. And so taking an orders view of the world, you're able to identify what you can do in the ripple effect of an integrated supply chain to mitigate delivery risk, whether it be uh, fulfill from other facilities, change around production schedules, change around which order lines are fulfilling which customers, uh, accelerate suppliers, provide a series of these recommendations that while they have ripple effects, we're providing the next best action, right? Because in this global integrated supply chain, hard to know what to do next. It also is focusing on what's likely to stock out next. And then also the plan will be to deploy a clear to build, continue to build set of recommendations. I need to start a long lead time item, four week build for a very large piece of equipment. When should I start it knowing I may not need the part that I am really crit critical to have for a week, but am I actually gonna get it if I don't have it? And if I start it, that's a really big cost if I don't able, I'm not able to finish or I have to hold up the production line. So the entire application is geared towards that value proposition. And when we've deployed this at large health technology companies, we've seen orders of magnitude increase in order volume delivery. Uh, and you know, this is a very fast production uh, to move, or fast application to move into production, taking advantage of that core foundational uh, capabilities of the supply chain. We built another application that's also focused now a little bit more granularly on the production planning and the production scheduling functions. So taking the optimization framework at the higher level and pointing it at the production planning and production scheduling processes. So looking to manage and maximize uptime and fill time, you have changes to your labor force, you have changes to your order or your uh, overtime or your uh, shift schedules and the cost functions associated with them. Uh, you want to prioritize certain types of demand, customer demand A or customer A, customer B, or types of products. How do I do that and then know how to sequence it appropriately to maximize efficiency? It's really geared towards the both long-term horizon planning optimization functions and then detailed scheduling functions and then enabling users to take action and move things around and finalize it and then push it back into the core ERP. In a large food manufacturing company, we've seen multiples of uh, percentage points improvements in fill rate. For them, it, because it's food, it either ships or you lose the order. And so this is revenue, direct revenue impact and, uh, and uh, so, so opportunities to then reduce, improve efficiency and reduction in changeovers. In demand planning, what we're focusing on is really enabling SKU level uh, demand forecasting aggregated at the regional level, at the, at, at the facility level, and disaggregated all the way down to the individual product and product group, and to do so from the finished good and then propagate that down through the bill of materials. And so usage of this product uh, at a large hydrocarbon processing company has really supported them in improving the forecast. And as many of you are quite aware, if you can get the demand function into your ERP, your MRP functions to be more accurate, everything automatically starts to improve. You're gonna have better, more accurate production plans, better, more accurate supply plans, your working capital already improved. And so this is also a foundational capability that really enables even without the rather C3 application suite, but really core foundational capability. Uh, and then lastly, sourcing optimization. We're providing what the, based on all of your demand and supply functions, we're looking at say the 52 week planning horizon. So by product, by day, what's your expected um, production amount in order to maximize whatever your cost function is. Whether you minimize cost, maximize fill rate, or what have you. As you can see, there might be a specific then 30-day schedule. And so for every single day, we're actually planning out the different changeovers, the different products on each production line. And because we're optimizing across the board, we're telling here's where your overall fill rate's gonna be, here's what your uh, efficiency loss is gonna be, here's what your shifts are gonna look like, and we've planned it out. Now, what we also anticipate is that every single customer might wanna make tweaks or there might be new data that only a planner or a scheduler has. And so they're able to then use the interface of the application to make those final edits 
see how those change from what the master schedule, the optimizer might provide, and then embed that directly and, and approve the whole master schedule. This is, compared to the legacy systems, you know, you might use you know, things like Logilia or APO or others, really what you're doing is manually scheduling and you're using heuristics. You're using decades of codified expertise and subject matter expertise in order to really engage uh, and do that more effectively. So maybe just to add on that, in, in SAP speak, right, the recommendation is a set of process orders, right? It's a set of process orders that are coming from this optimized schedule that you can make adjustments to using this uh, you know, time series visualization on your schedule before pushing these action recommendations or confirm process orders back into your ERP system. This application can be configured to do longer term supply planning where you're not actually looking at within a day or within a, a, a schedule, right, within a shift, when to be producing specific items at that process or production order level. But you can also be looking at a daily view over, you know, in the, in the use case that, that Adrian walked us through, that, that higher level supply planning was on a 52 week horizon, just looking at day production, you know, product level plans, right? which isn't necessarily fed into an execution system for, 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 for production, but used to do other you know, uh, downstream planning activities. So in the interest of time, what I want to talk through is the roadmap. Where are we going? We're heavily focused right now on supply risk as we're, we're hearing from the customer base. That's what COVID is exacerbating. Item stock out prediction, clear and continue to build. Supplier collaboration, actually enabling the manufacturers the, to engage the production people, to engage with their tier one, two, three supply chain and actually understand, hey, there is an issue. Sometimes there's actually, that collaboration is actually quite challenging. The next thing we'll be focusing on this summer is really enhancing optimization and forecasting algorithms and techniques, um, enabling that at even larger scale and then putting that again, more in a GERT, more uh, refined user interface for user action, edit, review. And then lastly, integrated scenario modeling. Really what we're focusing on is more of the what if scenario and, and planning. So a lot of this has been generated from what we've heard. What we also want to know is what you need. And I know we're out of time on this particular session. And so we're here. We're also in the solution hub. Uh, please feel free to engage us at any point in time. We'd love to also know where you have pain points in your businesses that we may not already be addressing or things that we might be able to accelerate if it's a significant one for you. So with that, and on behalf of Alex, thank you so much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of Transform.